Hello, everyone, and welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm Kelly with Kelsey, and we are so glad that you guys are able to join us. We hope that you all are staying healthy and safe, and we are so glad to give you an opportunity to show you what our community is still doing, Kelsey. That's right, Kelly, and there is a lot going on, and one of the areas we're going to go up to is to Three Oaks, Michigan, where Journeyman Distillery is completely changing things up, uh, and we'll find out more about that soon. And then we're also going to go to the Niles History Center to find out what they're doing to engage the community online. That's right. And then we're headed down to Winona Lake to the Boathouse Restaurant where they're still serving up their great food and we'll show you how you can get some. Well, while we're there, let's head on over to the Port Winona Wines and Market and we're going to be transported to Italy through a box. You'll get it, you'll see. We are so glad to have Tiffany from Port Winona Wine Market. And Tiffany, I hear we're gonna do a little bit of wine tasting today. Yes, we are. Wouldn't be talking to me without some wine involved. <laughs> okay, so you're doing this great series called Psalm in a Box series. Now tell me what Psalm stands for. So Psalm is short for sommelier, which is basically a wine expert. So if you were to go into a restaurant or a market and look for a bottle, they're certified to help you out, pick the bottle for you and all of that. So basically the idea with the box is people can take this kit home. There's information on each of the six wines and they can kind of for themselves become a little expert on those bottles and learn a lot more. Wow, so you get six wines in a, in a box. Tell us yes. about what are, what are some of the wines that people will get? Yeah, so this series that we're doing right now is all Italian wines. So we pick the main Italian wine regions. So we have a sparkling, we have a white, we have a rosé, and then three reds, which most people love the reds, so we kind of went heavy on that side. Um, and it just, like I said, really highlights Italy as a whole and kind of what they have to offer as far as their wine goes. Now, there are many countries you could have chosen. What made you choose Italy? Yeah, so we... This is our first time doing this. We had a box before and now we've decided we'll do one more and we'll kind of focus more on countries or specific regions. Um, and so with everything going on in the world right now, we really wanted to focus on Italy first and just highlight and be positive um, about them as a whole and a community, especially as they're healing right now um, and highlight their, you know, their food, their culture, their wines and all of that. Now, for some people like myself, I am not a wine expert. I am, you know, I don't know much about wine. <laughs> Can you kind of walk us through the six different wines that are in there and perhaps what might go well with one of the wines? Yeah, so the really fun thing about the box is we actually have food pairing recipes for each wine in the box. So you can really have a whole night in with these. Um, the sparkling is a really nice Prosecco-like wine, really easy, refreshing, a little bit of those sweet notes. Um, we have a Pinot Grigio in the box, and that, if you're a summer person, it's a great patio pounder. It's just easy to kind of enjoy on a hot day, a lot of melon notes to it. Um, the rosé that we're doing, so we actually are in rosé season, technically. Um, and normally, if I think everyone was open, you would see a lot of rosé on menus and things like that and pairings going on. Um, so we definitely wanted to put one of those in the box. This one's going to be a really fun, light, acidic one. Um, we're pairing that one with a melon salad, actually. Just a really fun spring idea. Um, and then, like I said, you have the three wines. So we are tasting one today, the Chianti. Yeah, so I know you have a bottle there and I'm sipping on that as well. Um, and then we have, yep, <laughs> and then we have a Nebbiolo. And then the third one in the box is a Tiradalgo, which is going to be fun for some people. That's definitely a new one to learn about. So yeah, there's a lot to, lot to experience. Yeah. Now, are these video tastings? Yeah, so what we do throughout the week is every day we post a video of us tasting that wine, talking a little bit more in depth about it, and then also our food pairing suggestions and recipes. So you can really follow along, you can comment. We encourage people to be vocal and let us know what they think about it and really come together over it. That's wonderful. Now, so there's a deadline to ordering the wine, is that correct? Yeah, so this Wednesday, we ask that everybody have their orders in. So yeah, the 20th, 25th, 24th, I think. Okay, and so then on the 25th, April 25th, they can come and pick up the boxes between 2 and 5 p.m. Yep, so this Saturday, people are going to come and pick up, and then you can get that, go home with it, and you can start whenever you'd like. 
Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much. You sent one to me here. Now, how do you pronounce this one again? Is it Malini? So this is Ki so this is Chianti is the great. Malini is the producer. I told you I didn't know anything about wine. <laughs> hey, well, I always ask people, the only thing that's important is do you like it? Yes, there we go. And I am ready to taste it along with you, Tiffany. Yes, yeah, so Chianti is really a big, big um, grape for Italy. It's Sangiovese is the grape they use in that um, primarily. They'll usually blend in a few other ones. Um, but if you go and get like table wine in Italy, Chianti is probably going to be what they recommend for you. Um, it is a little tart, a lot of red fruits going on, a little bit of herbaceous notes like oregano. So it goes really well with pizza. Um, but yeah, cheers. Okay, well, let's do a cheer to brighter days in our community and our nation. And it's kind of a nice thing to do, a little, little respite taking us to Italy here, Tiffany. So cheers. <laughs> cheers. Thank you. Oh, that's delicious. And you know what's kind of good about quarantine? I don't have to share with anybody. <laughs> See, no one needs to know. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much. And thank you for all that you're doing in the community. Keep people engaged. Keep them, you know, just encouraged throughout this. So thank you so much. And for those of you who are watching, if you have any ideas, wonderful things happening in your community, please connect with us on Facebook. We'd love to feature it. Tiffany, cheers, and thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks, Kelly. What a great way, again, to transport us to Italy. Six different wines in a box. And I tell you what, I'm not very good with wines, but I learned a lot. And what's really great is they're going to be continuing to do this. So every month, you'll have an opportunity to learn more about wine and be transported to a different country. I love it, Kelsey. <laughs> That's right. You and Tiffany seem to have a really great time. We sure did. Yep. So, okay, so now we're headed up to Three Oaks where I get a chance to talk to Bill uh, Welter with Journeyman Distillery and see how they've really kind of changed what they're doing there. So in this time where there are a lot of uncertainties, one of the great things that we have found is our community is full of uh, resourcefulness and uh, thinking outside of the box. And one of the examples of that is Journeyman Distillery up in Three Oaks. And with me today is Bill Welter. Bill, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we know at the beginning of all of this, uh, it was kind of a, a shock and a, um, almost a scary moment when you have to realize you've got to close the doors. So what was that like for you? Well, thanks, Kelsey, for uh, having me on. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think like so many uh, businesses, small businesses across America, we were faced with the uh, un unfortunate news, obviously, from, from the state of Michigan in our case, that we had to temporarily close the doors on our restaurant and event spaces. And, um, and, and we had to take the steps of laying off 110 people at that point. And uh, obviously, you know, it's got wrenching uh the business in many ways has been just you know shuttered and um we feel for our employees uh we um very much desire to get back to business and uh, have those people working again so um you know just just one of the hardest things i think you could do as a as a small business owner so in the midst of that and, and uh, trying to figure out what to do both uh, as a business to keep that alive as well as uh, taking care of your business family, uh, you guys kind of switched gears and instead of uh, producing whiskey right now, you're producing something else. What is that? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I guess a, a bit of good luck and fate. Uh, the FDA a few weeks back uh, changed uh, their, um, ru I guess, ruling to, to allow for craft distilleries such as Journeyman to start making hand sanitizer, recognizing that there is a, a significant shortage in the market and that distillers such as us could uh, really play a big role in, uh, in, filling, in filling that need for uh, the healthcare profession, but also, you know, kind of... Um, frontline uh, responders, uh, the, uh, and, and really just the general public. So I've, I've described it as kind of a, a minor business miracle for us in the sense that it's allowed us to put about 15% of our workforce back into, into play, uh, but also at a time when we've had virtually no revenue coming in, it's provided us with a little bit of a boost 
uh, until we can get our main operations back up and running. Of course, that being our restaurant events and um, our manufacturing of our whiskey. So currently you guys are open in limited hours throughout the week uh, to, to pick up. Um, and then on Saturdays, uh, you guys are doing some food for curbside pickup. And I've, I've heard you've had a pretty long line on Saturdays. Yeah, we, um, so uh, up until recently, we had been open just on Saturdays. Uh, so um, with the idea of, of we've, we've actually given away over 1,600 bottles of hand sanitizer uh, on those Saturdays. But also as an essential business, we've we've had the opportunity to sell some of our distilled spirits as well, which is, has also been great. Um, we've recently uh, added a little bit more availability and expanded our hours now Monday through Friday from noon to 5 p.m. and then uh, Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, to give people a chance. We're, we're giving away 50 uh, personal sized bottles of sanitizer every day uh, going forward. Uh, while supplies last, and then uh, we'll also have larger bottles of san sanitizer for sale, as well as our, our products. And then on, on Saturdays, we've actually um, offered up uh, a food option, uh, and that's been kind of limited. But as, as you mentioned, uh, we've had quite a response. Uh, frankly, um, one of the uh, days we had people actually lined up from our distillery and their cars, of course, um, outside of the village limits, uh, which, you know, the village is pretty small, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the, the cars backing up was was quite a sight to see. And, and certainly is heartwarming for us to have people come out and still wanna support our business during a challenging time. Yeah, and one of the things that we're really hoping for is those opportunities to open things back up eventually so that businesses like yours can uh, not just offer us consumers things, but for you to be able to take care of your family, uh, your business family, those those employees that uh, that have helped you for, for so long. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, everybody out there, if, if you want to know when they're open and what you can get when, uh, check out all their social media stuff, uh, their website, you know, for up-to-date stuff. Bill, um, what on Saturdays, food-wise, limited menus, is that something that changes each week, something they should be looking at Facebook for? What, what's that like? Yeah, we're trying to update the, the menu items on Facebook as quickly as we know what's available. Um, one week we did uh, pot pies, we've done uh, tamales, uh, which were a big hit. I'm sure people would, I received a lot of emails and calls about the tamales. Uh, this week, um, we're working on the menu right now and hope to have that out by tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, you know, people, I'm sure like you and me and everyone else, we're, we're probably tired of, um, you know, cooking at home and doing the dishes and, and, and people um, have exhausted some of their, their favorite carryout options. So we've, we've seen a lot of interest in, in the Saturday food thing. And it's, it's been <clears throat> fun for our guys to kind of use some of their creates creative skills and and uh, their culinary skills to put something together. That's great. Now, uh, remember, if you guys at home have ideas of places uh, like Journeyman that are doing something unique in these times that we should highlight, let us know. Also, uh, people who are going above and beyond, give us a shout out on Facebook and let us know. We'd love to share it with our community. And Bill, I think one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is uh, Welter's Folly opening back up so we can get out and, and put around there behind the restaurant. Yeah, we're uh, maintaining it uh, as we speak, actually. Uh, we're out mowing that green today and getting it ready for the spring. We're optimistic. Um, I know that the country is going to reopen. Uh, this country has always done incredibly well, and we're preparing as a business to uh, get back into the swing of things and, and get back to some, some normalcy. So I'm encouraged um, and, and really as excited as anyone else to see people out on that putting green and uh, have people walking the halls of journeyman again. Yeah, and we're looking forward to that as well. So Bill, thank you so much for your time and all that you guys are doing. Thanks a lot, Kelsey. Thank you so much to Bill for sharing with us how they've changed things up and how they're helping to serve the community and uh, their staff, who a lot of which are still at home, unfortunately, and we're hoping that they can get back to work real soon. 
Kelsey, can can we go there and get some? Hand sanitizer is really hard to find right now. Yeah, yeah, you can get six days a week. They're open, limited hours, and then on Saturdays they're they're providing food. So yeah, I've heard the line has been backed up like a mile on Saturdays. So people wow. really wanting what they have. So maybe we'll go Monday. <laughs> Well, let's head on over to the Niles History Center, where they're doing some very innovative things to bring in the community, even though their doors are closed. And one of them is collecting stories about everyone's COVID experience. We are so glad that Molly, the assistant director at Niles History Center, could join us. And Molly, like many organizations across our community and our country, you've had to close your doors to the public, but you have found a way to keep the community engaged. And so virtually your doors are still open. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have been working to do virtual exhibits and share other content uh, through our social media page and our website so that people can still engage with the museum and um, connect with us even if they can't physically come to the space right now. So let's talk about a few of the exhibits that you have. One of them is called A Journey Through Niles. Yes, um, this is an exhibit that we recently opened at the museum. Um, it was funded through a grant by the Berrien Community Foundation, and it's called A Journey Through Niles History, A to Z and 1 through 10. And it's supposed to be intended for younger audiences and our younger visitors at the museum. Um, and actually, if you're in the museum, the panels are below our regular display cases, which is the perfect height for some of our younger visitors. But it really um, goes through Niles history A to Z, and it highlights um, different topics that we're hoping that younger visitors will recognize, but also our older ones too. Things like A is for Apple Fest, which is a community festival that's been going on in Niles since the 1970s and is very much remembered by older generations and younger ones who know of it for today too. Now you also have an exhibit and it's kind of interesting. It's called, uh, it's a collection of COVID-19 stories. Yes, this is a new project that we actually just launched last week. Um, like many museums throughout the world, really, um, we are looking to document people's experiences during this historic time. And so, um, People are encouraged to go to NilesHistoryCenter.org and we actually have an online application where you can submit your own story related to the um, COVID-19 pandemic and how it's impacted you and your family. I'm just curious, did you have an opportunity to read some of the stories that have come through? Yes, we have been getting um, some stories coming in already, people sharing their experiences, um, working from home, now having to, to help educate their children from home in new ways. Um, we had a story of a couple who got married during this time and they couldn't have anybody at their wedding. So we've been hearing some of these stories coming in and I think we're gonna get even more. Um, our plan is to keep up the form at least through the summer. And so we're encouraging people to just keep, you know, share your stories so that future generations will know um, what the experiences were like from people in our own community. You know, I've heard so many people talk about wanting to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of this sense that we don't know what this new normal might look like. Yeah. Just since you're a part of, you know, it's the History Center, what are your thoughts on what is the Niles community, what could it possibly look like after this? Yeah, um, I think that's a really interesting question. And I think we will be seeing um, a new normal. And I think from our view here at the History Center, some of the things that we're doing, offering more online content, I think that's something that's gonna be able to continue even after we open our doors and that we will be able to offer more online um, content and resources for people who maybe aren't going to be coming into the museum right away after we open. We can still engage with them. Absolutely. What are some of the things you have on the horizon? Oh, um, well, we're going to continue doing this A through Z Niles history. I think we're about halfway through right now. And then um, we've talked about other just small exhibits we can share. Some of the things I love to do, um, we are working on updating some of our exhibits while we work from home right now. And so I enjoy sharing some of the like artifacts, like pictures of artifacts um, from our collection online or throwing or throwing out some throwback photos um, from the community too. People seem to like those. So I think we're gonna continue doing a lot of that while we're 
while we're on close and even when we open again too. <laughs> Wonderful, Molly. Now, how can people connect with you? Um, well, the best way to reach us right now is to email us at nileshistory at nilesmi.org. And then, of course, check out our website, www.nileshistorycenter.org. Um, we'll have updates about when we know opening dates again or any updates that we have, we post to that page. And of course, if you check out our social media, our Facebook page, um, we're posting several times a week with just some fun content. And we'd love to, um, to hear from people who are enjoying seeing some of this stuff. So Absolutely. Well, yeah. Molly, thank you so much for being with us. And as always, everyone, please let us know what's going on in your community. There's so much comfort in knowing that we can still stay connected. Thanks again, Molly. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Molly, and thank you to the History Center that's doing so much to really engage the community, particularly the young ones there. And I know moms and dads are really very grateful for that, but also loving that they're taking the stories of people that have the experience with this COVID virus. And, you know, I just really think it's connecting people and giving people hope in the midst of everything. Yeah, and as a reminder, you don't have to be from Niles to share your story right now. So uh, wherever you are watching this right now, you can share your story too. So just check out their website, right, Kelly? Yes, that's really awesome. So where are we headed now? Yeah, so next we're headed to uh, the Boathouse Restaurant down in Winona Lake. Uh, and they initially closed uh, after all this stuff happened, but opened back up because there was such a demand for their food. So they're doing curbside pickup, and we're gonna find out more about that now. So one of the things that we're trying to do right now, as many of us are stuck at home, is find ways for you guys to still participate in things. And, uh, and one of those favorite things is eating, right? And so we have some tremendous restaurants in our, our viewing area, and we want to let you know about places that are still open, that are still providing the wonderful food. And one of those is the Boat House down in Winona Lake. And uh, Kyle is joining me today. And Kyle, you guys are open back up and serving, right? Right, yeah, we initially closed for a couple of weeks after we got the news that we were not allowed to do the dine-in anymore. Um, and it was just one of those things that we had lots of messages and um, people just requesting us, you know, hey, we really want to see you guys. We want to get your food, you know, we want to support you. And uh, it was just one of those things that we just kind of decided we, we should do this because we don't know how long this whole thing was going to last. So that's what we decided, yeah. Sure, that's great. So you guys have curbside pickup and uh, I think there's some delivery options in the area. Not exactly sure what all of those are, but DoorDash and, and, and maybe another option there. Uh, but tell me, uh, you guys have a, a menu, you, you've you scaled it back a little bit, uh, but what are some of the things that are on the menu now? So basically we have all of our salads, all of our appetizers, um, except for our ahi tuna, which might be making a comeback here soon. Um, we have um, some of our more popular chicken dishes, um, we just put our Asian cashew chicken back on the menu this past Monday because we had a ton of requests for that. Um, we have some of our wraps, again, uh, our burgers are all on there. Um, we have our prime rib, which was uh, always has been a huge thing for us, and people love that, so we wanted to keep that for sure. Um, and another thing we just added this past Monday was um, oriental lettuce wraps, which was something that was also very popular and very much requested. So um, we do make two homemade soups every day, uh, something that we've kept up on. And one of our promotions for this period is we're actually doing a free 12-ounce bowl of soup with each adult meal um, just to give people an, a chance to try our soup and maybe step out of their comfort zone and order something that they normally wouldn't. So Now, when it comes to the ordering process, uh, people call in their orders. Uh, is that right? And how much, how much time should they give you uh, in order to get those? We run about 15 to 20 minutes per order, um, so it's a very quick turnaround time. Um, and yes, we're doing call-in orders. So you just call our phone number, 574-268-2179, um, and then... Um, we take your order, and then if you want to do the curbside, you just give us a call when you get there. We ask you what your name and your um, color of car you're in. We come out and get all that stuff taken care of, bring the food out for you, and you're on your way. 
Right. Well, I can appreciate that you guys are are being flexible in trying to meet the needs of those people who still want to order and, and you know s and stay open. It's important for our businesses, and so we're encouraging those people out there if you can and if you if you love the boathouse uh, food like we do, uh, give them a call. Uh, they'll be happy to uh, set you up uh, with whatever you guys are wanting. Um, Kyle, tell me what are some of the favorites? Uh, are they the same favorites as before? What are some of the favorites that people are ordering for those pickups? Uh, we see a lot of our chicken and bacon wraps go out. That is by far our number one seller. Um, and I believe I sent a picture of that to you, so you'll be able to include that. But um, we see a lot of those go out. We see a lot of our burgers. Um, we see a lot of prime rib. We see a lot of our salmon. Those are really popular um, just in general when we're serving regular dine-in guests as well. Um, our nachos are a huge hit. Um, and then, like I said, our soups, um, they go well in the refrigerator and you can warm them up easily. So it's a nice um, option for families that, you know, you want to order a big order of soup and then warm it up, you know, Monday for lunch and maybe Monday for dinner or, you know, whenever it, it works out well. So, um, yeah, a lot of our favorites that are normally on the menu, they are continuing to be our favorites for takeout. Very good. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for the time and for what you're doing. We really look forward to the time when we're open back up for seating because you have such a beautiful view right there on the lake. Yeah, thank you. We're really excited to open back up normally as well, but thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Now, guys, remember, uh, for more things like this, uh, or if you have ideas, join us on our Facebook page, share them with us. If you guys are doing creative things at home as a way to stay entertained, or if you know of places or people that are going above and beyond right now, uh, let us know that as well. And, and until next time, stay safe. It was great to talk to Kyle and find out that we can still get that wonderful boathouse uh, restaurant food, uh, but we can't wait to get back into the, the restaurant and that beautiful view right there on the lake. Uh, and there's so much to look forward to, isn't there, Kelly? Yes, there is. Speaking of getting back to Kelsey, any idea when we might that might happen? <laughs> Uh, you know, that's a good question. We hear some things might open up soon, like the beginning of May, uh, but we're not sure. As with everything, that's that's changing from day to day. Yes, it is. Well, you know what? It kind of reminds me of our Christmas song about all of the places that we're going to go. I think what we need to do is still make our list and yep. still plan, and we'd love to hear from you. When all of this is over, what are some of the places you'd like to see us go and experience again? We can't wait to do that, but in the meantime, we want to hear about your stories. What are you doing to stay occupied and stay engaged as well? And all of the segments as well, you can see on our Facebook page and also contact us there. And you can also find out more information on experiencemissiana.org. I said Missiana, that just reminds me of Rick. <laughs> well, we'll see Rick real soon, hopefully. <laughs> all right, well guys, thank you so much for being with us. And as always, right now, stay safe and stay healthy and we will see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.